Officially welcome you to my YouTube channel. My name is Setako Ajimai. In this video, I am going to um, expose you to the anatomy, the physiology, and the dissection of IELTS. You know, the purpose of this video is to probably throw more light on IELTS because I've had a lot of people ask me questions with regards to IELTS. How do I register? What is IELTS at all? I mean, what are the types? What are the bands called? Um, which institutions accept IELTS? I mean, all these questions keep coming in and I felt like I have to make a separate video to, I mean, answer all these questions. So in this video, that's what I'm going to do. So if you are planning to write IELTS or you are already into it and you don't have much knowledge about it, then this video is for sure. So if you're interested, why don't you come with me as we look at that? Welcome back. What I do on this channel is very simple. I share my IELTS experience with new IELTS test tickets, and as part of that, I also share the processes one has to go through to um, getting myself in the UK to work or study. So, um, if you are new on this channel, I officially welcome you. I want you to subscribe to this channel by clicking the subscribe button right under this video, and also make sure that you are liking and sharing this video to as many people as you can because you know most people need this information to I mean carry out their dream or to pursue their dream to come into the uk so if you are here it's not a mistake you are going to get a great deal of information in this video okay now um to set the purpose of this video very well there are basically five things i'm going to do the first one is i'll let you know what IELTS is and then um you look at the IELTS test sessions and also how to prepare for IELTS and then how to book for IELTS okay so I think these are the basic questions people do ask me and I believe that once you watch this video to the end, you'll be able to discover answers to them. If there's any question I don't cover in this video, you can leave that in the comment section and I'll quickly give an answer to that. Okay, I believe you are in. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to throw more light on what IELTS is. Now, let's begin. So. So what is IELTS? IELTS stands for the International English Language Testing System and is the world's most popular English language proficiency test for higher, I mean, education and global migration. IELTS is an English test that assesses your listening, reading, writing and speaking skills. So the simple explanation I can give to this is that IELTS is an English test, okay? And once you decide to sit for these exams, you are going to write a listening test, reading test, speaking test, and then writing test. And it's an English test that is accepted worldwide. Most institutions, about 10,000 organizations, accept IELTS. Okay, so once you decide to uh, probably register or apply to an institution in a, an English speaking country, the general idea here is that you request for an IELTS test report form. And the IELTS is to prove to them that you can communicate in English. The IELTS is to prove to them that you are proficient in the English language, okay? One thing about the IELTS is that, you see, governments in Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and the United Kingdom use IELTS to process immigration applications. So if you want to apply for a visa, or probably come to the UK, um, Australia, Canada, or um, New Zealand to work or study, they will request for IELTS. What this means is that if you decide to apply for a visa, or basically, I mean, start your process of coming to the UK, Australia, New Zealand, and then Canada to work or study, they will request for IELTS because the government in these areas have agreed to use IELTS as a test of your English proficiency. Which IELTS should I take? Most people do ask this question, and that is the next thing we are going to look at. You see, once you decide to write IELTS, they are basically three main types of IELTS. I mean, when you go to the British Council's website, you see about four of them. But in general sense, they are basically three types, okay? Um, we have the IELTS Academic, we have the IELTS General Training, and then we have the IELTS Life Skills. Each one serves a purpose. So depending on what you want to use the test reports form for, or depending on what you want to use the results for, you have to choose the right one, okay? Because 
most of the institutions will specify the type of IELTS you are looking for. If you are a nurse or if you are into the healthcare profession, what happens here is that you are required to sit for the IELTS academic and you must take notice of that. And if you basically want to enhance your training in a, a different sector other than the healthcare profession, um, you are required to sit for the general training. So let's look at that. So when you consider the IELTS academic, it measures whether your level of English language proficiency is suitable for academic environment. It reflects aspect of academic language and evaluates whether you are ready to begin training or studying. It's for undergraduates. So if you want to apply to an institution or probably if you want to further your education, do your master, do your degree, then you have to sit for the IELTS academic, okay? And uh, it's also for postgraduate or professional courses and training. So as I explained. So now let's look at the general training. Who is it meant for? And why should you write the IELTS general training? Okay, so it measures the English language proficiency in a practical everyday context. The general training reflects both workplace and then social situations. Um, it's for secondary education, migration, work or training. So, I mean, you shouldn't get worried about this because, I mean, depending on the institution you want to apply to, they will specify the type of IELTS you are looking for. But generally, as the name implies, general training is basically written to um, come to the UK, Canada, Australia or New Zealand to enhance your training in a field, okay, in a workplace, I mean, certain, all right, so you have to take notice of that as well. So now let's look at the last one, which is the IELTS life skill. What is it meant for? Why should you write the IELTS life skill? Okay, so IELTS life skill is a UK government approved secure English language test that assesses your English speaking and listening skills at level A1, A2, or B1 of the Common European Framework of Reference for languages okay so with this type of test you are only being tested on two things your listening and your speaking skills you are not going in for the reading and the writings i mean test so i'm not going to dive much into this because as a nurse or as a midwife or as somebody in the healthcare profession you don't need the um ielts life skills okay so the ielts life skills is usually um for people who want to have family visa extension to family spouse or partner visa and then indefinite leave to remain or citizenship okay so you just have to um, take notice of that so now when you decide to sit for the ielts academic what are the categories i mean what's the structure and what's the format that's what you are going to look at both the ielts academic and the general training have four basic parts i've mentioned that earlier we have the listening test, we have the academic reading, okay, and we have the general reading, I mean the general training reading. I mean there are two, the format is different. In the academic reading, we have three long passages, and in the general training reading, the passages are very short, okay. And then we have academic writing and general training writing. So there's a little bit of difference in the writing aspect as well. So with academic writing, we are dwelling much on um, describing diagrams and then uh, more of uh, opinion essays and then a whole lot of that. And then with the general training writing, we are dealing with letters, I mean formal letters, semi-formal letters and then um, yeah, so you just have to look at that and then speaking. So the major difference here or the common thing that is done in both sectors is listening and then speaking. There's no difference. But apart from that, there's a difference in the reading and then the writing for the IELTS academic and the IELTS general training. Okay. Now, when you consider the listening test, you are to basically use 30 minutes to answer 40 questions. Okay. And here, once the 30 minutes is due, you'll be given additional 10 minutes to transfer your answers from the question um, paper onto the answer booklet. So the general idea here is that you answer the listening test questions on the question paper and then once you are done they give you some time which is 10 minutes to transfer your answers onto the answer booklet okay so you just have to take notice of that and then with the reading we are going to use 60 minutes which is equal to one hour for 40 questions okay and there are different question formats you have to familiarize yourself with before you go into examination center 
to write these exams. And then we have the writing test. It's also 60 minutes. So we have 20 minutes for the tax one, especially if you are writing the IELTS academic, and then 40 minutes for the tax two. Okay. So um, you have two tax. You are going to write two essays. With the tax one for the IELTS academic, you are describing diagrams, which can be in the form of a bar chart, a line graph, a pie chart, tables, and then um, we, we have processes and then maps inclusive for the tax one of the IELTS academic um, writing essay. And then when it comes to the general training, we are looking at writing letters and then uh, yeah, something like that. And then the speaking test. With the speaking test, you can probably spend about 11 to 14 minutes with a certified examiner in a room or basically in a video format okay so you might be in a room um, sitting um, behind a laptop and then um, you'll be answering questions um, I mean it, it's more of a zoom type of I mean conversation or interview something like that so it comes in three parts you have the part one where you are to basically answer questions in relation to your family your personal life your hobbies and with this type of I mean, with the part one, you are supposed to give short answers. You are not to talk at length, okay? And then the part two is where we are giving a cue card with some questions. I mean, with a question on it with um, guys, okay? So they can give you a question like, describe a team you once joined, okay? And with the guys, you have something like, um, which team it was, um, when you joined the team, who you were in with, and why you liked the team. I mean, these are some of the guys. So that's the part two. They give you a key card and you have to talk for one to two minutes okay and then the part three is where you talk at length i mean they'll ask you general questions and based on the part two or based on the concept of the subject matter you had in the part two so they can ask you something like if you had questions um on the something like let's say teamwork in the part two they can ask you something like um why do you think it's important to join a team in the part three i mean yeah something like that so you just have to take notes and here you have to talk at length until the examiner stops you or interrupts you with um, a different question okay so these are basically the formats for the IELTS the next thing we are going to look at is how IELTS is scored okay so the IELTS academic and the general training models are designed to assess English language skills across a wide range of levels there is no such thing as pass or fail in IELTS let me explain this you see most times we say that you have failed IELTS but that's not the case there is no pass or fail in IELTS and the reason is that every institution is looking for a specified or a certain band score or a certain resource. So the results you get may not be acceptable by one institution but it may be more of, I mean, better for another institution. Okay, so what I want to say is that the only time you can say you have failed IELTS is when you know you are applying to this institution and this is what you are looking for this is a band score this is the result you are looking for and you couldn't achieve that result that is when you can say that i mean you feel that you're in that aspect but you should bear in mind that that result you are having at your disposal is more of accepted in one particular institution just that you don't have interest in that institution and that is why you think you are failed okay so just take me to so that results are reported as band scores on a scale from one which is the lowest to nine the highest so we have band one to band nine okay and then most of the institutions are looking for i mean a certain band score within this range we have an overall band score which is the average of all the four aspects you wrote and then we have the individual scores so the advice i'll give you is that you have to just look out for the band score or the results your institution is looking for so if you're, if you're a nurse or a midwife and you want to work in the UK, um, the UK requires that you have, I mean, an overall band score of seven and above. Okay, so seven to nine. And then you should have seven in all the aspects except writing. That you can have 6.5 and above. Okay, so if you have this score, then you qualify to apply to the UK NMC. All right, so you just have to take notice of that. Canada requires that you have, I mean, seven throughout. I mean, Canada has different states or different provinces and um when you talk of the uh, british columbia they have the same I mean, requirements as the uk but i mean the other sectors have different band scores so you have to know the institution you're applying to and the score they are looking from you 
So now each of the four sessions, which is the listening, reading, writing, and speaking, is scored out of nine. And then the overall score is the average of the four, as I only explained. Okay. And uh, a certified IELTS examiner will assess your performance throughout the speaking and listening test based on the following criteria obtaining information, conveying information, speaking to communicate, engaging in discussion. And I mean, the purpose of the IELTS is to, I mean, meet these four criteria. So at the end of the day, the question is are you able to obtain information? Are you able to convey information? Are you able to speak, to communicate, and are you able to engage in discussion? And I mean, there is a way to manifest. I mean, this manifests in all the four aspects, okay? So you just want to know because once you are moving to any you know, of the countries I mentioned, the major language is English, and they would want to know if they can communicate in English, okay? So basically, um, this is what you must know. I mean, these are the basic things you must know about IELTS before you go in or to register. All right, so let's look at how to book for an IELTS test. Once you are convinced that you want to write the IELTS, you have to book for the test. And for you to book for the test, you have to go to the British Council's website. I'll leave the link in the description box. So you just have to check that one out, okay? You have to just go to the British Council's website and then um, you have to input your details. So before that, you need, I mean, um, a valid ID card, okay? You need to create um, a Gmail account, which I believe you have. And then uh, I think these are the basic requirements you need. So you just have to look at that. And um, I've made a video about how to register for the IELTS. Okay, so you can check that one here, all right? Or check in the description box. I have a link in there. So um, that's basically what I want to let you know. In my next video, I'm going to talk about the individual sessions. I mean, how to what to expect and uh the number of questions to answer some one or two strategies and then um other important things i believe can help you pass IELTS on the first attempt my aim is to assist you pass on the first attempt so that you don't waste every money time and then energy thank you very much for watching this video i believe it has been very 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 helpful if i'm unable to answer some of the questions you asked i'll be very happy if you can leave that in the comment section so that i can give an answer to that okay uh, but I believe that whatever I've shared with you here is more than enough to usher you to either register or back off. But I believe, I mean, um, if you have the passion of working in the UK, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, then the start off is IELTS. All right. If you are new on this channel, I really appreciate you. I believe that um, you have already subscribed and that you are going to enjoy the rest of my content. Anyway, my name is Seth and I really appreciate you. Uh, thank you. Hope to see my next video.